Brief, where we bring you the latest developments across the globe and key activities to watch in the new week. We bring you the current updates on COVID-19 from the global to Nigerian level. Let's begin with the updates. At the global level, we have 3,546,692 cases with 247,255 deaths and 1,149,460 recoveries. In Africa, confirmed cases are 43,005 with 1,761 deaths and 14,169 recoveries. In Nigeria, we have 2,288 cases confirmed with 85 deaths and 351 recoveries. A review of last week showed that Nigeria recorded 1,057 new cases of coronavirus across the nation in 34 of the 36 states of the Federation. Due to the community transmission in parts of the country, a new case definition has been published for COVID-19 in Nigeria by the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC. Anyone with cough or fever or history of fever in the last two weeks with one or more of these symptoms listed below would be referred for assessment. Shivering or shaking, chills, body pain, headache, sore throat, recent loss of taste or smell, difficulty in breathing or shortness of breath, diarrhea or abdominal pain, running nose to catar, and fatigue to tiredness. A probable case of COVID-19 is any person that presented with any of the above symptoms in the last two weeks and died without a confirmatory COVID-19 test. The NCDC wants Nigerians to be vigilant and watch out for such symptoms. The United States of America's Small Business Administration, the SBA, has processed over 3.8 million loans for more than half a trillion dollars since the launch of the Paycheck Protection Program on April 3, 2020 to deal with the economic fallout of the coronavirus outbreak, according to a joint statement by the SBA and the Treasury Department. SBA has processed about 2.2 million loans, whose value is over $175 billion since the start of the second round of the PPP loan processing on April 27, the statement added. The second round of the SBA's Paycheck Protection Program was launched on Monday, allowing lenders to issue forgivable government-guaranteed loans to small businesses shuttered by the outbreak. The average loan size in the second round of the PPP loan processing has been $79 billion, according to the statement released today. Stakeholders in the global energy market need to work more collaboratively to show up the market's resilience in the face of the economic and supply chain disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Andrew Levin, Chief Operating Officer, Sahara Energy Resources, DMCC Dubai, has said, Lavin explores some of the key lessons from the pandemic for the energy market in an article for leading trade publication, Energy Voice, under the title, Finding the New Norms in the Post-COVID Supply Chain. Lavin's Sahara Energy Resources, DMCC Dubai, is an affiliate of the energy conglomerate Sahara Group, which has operations in Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. Lavin said the path to recovery is likely to be bumpy and everywhere will be moving at a different pace, so more of a wide U-shape than a quick V. Whatever the path, oil will be a critical element of the recovery, even though there is not much we can do to stimulate demand, the sector must prepare for recovery. Positioning all aspects of the value chain to supply energy to countries, communities, and individuals. According to Lavin, the market needs to brace up for a stimulus consumption, a shift in consumption following the disruptions caused by the pandemic. For example, more driving, less flying, will see demand for products change. Refineries may need to change the way they operate and produce different proportions of each fuel, which may see some refineries unable to co operate economically and being forced to close. Where things change, though, there are also opportunities for new energies. When demand starts to pick up, maybe the world will use it as an opportunity to take a step towards cleaner energies, he stated. Lavin argued that given experiences from previous market disruptions, it was certain that the market will bounce back, especially when all stakeholders work together to achieve the greater good for all. The oil market is exceptionally robust and will bounce back, but it would be a mistake to miss this opportunity to learn from the current challenges and build greater resilience in our supply chains for the future. In this area, we are happy to lead by example. Resilience has always been a part of Sahara Group's approach across the African continent, building a business that learns from the market conditions in order to adapt to and meet current requirements and changing circumstances, he added. 
The Lagos State Government has issued new guidelines for reopening of markets and shopping malls in the state as part of efforts to curb the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. Following Governor Babajide Sanwulu's announcement on the gradual easing of the lockdown in Lagos from tomorrow, Monday, May 4th. Speaking at a stakeholders' meeting in Alausa, Ikeja, the Honorable Commissioner for Local Government and Community Affairs, Dr. Wale Ahmed, reiterated that all markets and stores in the various local governments, local council development authorities across the metropolis will be allowed to open from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. on selected days. He emphasized that everyone attending these markets and stores will be mandated to observe precautionary measures such as physical distancing and high levels of personal and respiratory hygiene. Dr. Ahmed declared that malls will also be allowed to open with the proviso that stores will maintain a 60% occupancy capacity at any point in time, while also ensuring that a two-meter physical distancing is maintained between a shopper and the next person in the store. The commissioner maintained that food handlers must also wear masks and hand gloves in market at all times, directing that shop owners must provide hand sanitizers and wash hands with soap and running water at all entry points conduct temperature checks on customers and ensure that nobody is exempted from the process. According to him, the guidelines are proactive measures put in place by the government to curtail a possible spread of the deadly virus among traders in markets, police and malls when the gradual ease of the lockdown commences on Monday. Ahmed disclosed that stakeholders at the meeting, which was attended by the Yaloja, President General of Association of Commodity Market Women, and men of Nigeria, Mrs. Folashade Tinubu Ojo, and other major market leaders in the state unanimously agreed that effective from Monday, 4th May 2020, food sellers and other wear traders should operate on alternate days in all markets across the state. In essence, those trading in other items and wares apart from food will only be allowed to trade on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, while all food and farm produce sellers will operate on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, the commissioner explained. While stressing that there will be zero tolerance for all forms of street trading, Ahmed disclosed that all market leaders also prominent to ensure that their members abide by all the state guidelines, while the Ministry, Chairman of LGs and LCDAs, Office of the Yaloja General and the state enforcement agencies will ensure strict compliance with the directives. President Muhammad Abuari has approved the appointment of Mr. Sunday Thomas as a substantive commissioner for insurance and chief executive of the National Insurance Commission, NICOM. Mr. Yunus Abdullahi, Special Advisor, Media and Communications to the Ministry, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, disclosed this in a statement today in Abuja. Mr. Thomas replaced Malam Mohamed Kari, who was the Acting Commissioner for Insurance and CEO of the Commission. A special meeting of the Bankers Committee with the Central Bank of Nigeria convened yesterday, May 2nd, 2020, to further review the implications of the COVID-19 pandemic on the Nigerian banking industry agreed to particularly look at the issues around the industry and take steps. The committee particularly deliberated on the issue of operating costs of banks in view of the disruptions emanating from the global economic difficulties and decided as follows. In order to help minimize and mitigate the negative impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on families and livelihoods, no bank in Nigeria shall retrench or lay off any staff of any cadre, including full-time and part-time. To give effect to the above measure, the express approval of the Central Bank of Nigeria shall be required in the event that it becomes absolutely necessary to lay off any such staff. The Central Bank of Nigeria solicits the support of all in the collective effort to weather through the economic challenges occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now for the events to watch in the week. Fintech Association of Nigeria will host its webinar on COVID-19, a disruptive for fintech, tomorrow Monday, May 4th from 3 to 4 p.m. Union Bank of Nigeria, PLC, will hold its virtual annual general meeting in line with the guidelines of the CAC and SEC on Wednesday, May 6th by 11 a.m. The Convention on Business Integrity Project and in partnership with ProShare Nigeria and DLHQ will hold a very special session webinar looking at crisis response for MSMEs for May 6th from 11.30 a.m. It will look at, in the light of the current realities of the COVID-19 pandemic, the grappling uncertainties around the economy, business continuity, food security, social welfare, contract performance, and global mobility remain very disturbing in some cases, even more so than the ravaging COVID-19 virus itself. Amidst global conversations around appropriate business responses and strategies, 
they seem to be lacking a targeted, focused approach to crisis response for MSMEs, who are projected to be the most hit by the catastrophic impact of the virus on business continuity and sustenance. The conversation will bring together thought leaders within the Nigerian business community to propose homegrown solutions to address the growing concerns to, and risk to MSMEs. Create a platform for business owners and leaders to ask questions around their peculiar challenges and concerns. Propose appropriate responses and strategic plans required to minimize the disruptive impact of the pandemic to MSMEs and to achieve timely business recovery. Key focus areas to be discussed by experts in the leadership, legal, regulatory, digital and finance space are leading during a pandemic, what should business owners and leaders be doing, which will be anchored by Mr. Shiri Agbei, partner, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Navigating contractual rights and obligations, when does force major or prostitution set in, will be anchored by Mrs. Tosin Ajose, lead advisor, DLHQ. Stimulus, bailout concessions, government intervention for MSMEs and the recovery curve, which will be anchored by Mr. Soji Apampa, the CEO of the Convention on Business Integrity in Nigeria. Digital transformation for small businesses, what, when and how. Loan and credit, navigating ballooning interest carry and imminent defaults. Moderating the session is Mr. Ayo Bankole, convener, Lagos SME Bootcamp. You can also connect with us on Twitter for this event, which will be to MSME standards, and join the conversation using the hashtags, hash MSME conversation, hash MSME standards, hash crisis response. For any other inquiry, kindly send a mail to info at msmestandards.com for the event. Also, for further updates on the events calendar on the ProShare website, feel free to contact market.proshareng.com or call 0700-PROSHARE to get further updates and information. And that will be all for this edition of The Brief. You can visit our website www.prosherng.com to get more updates from our news stories and videos. You can also follow our social media platforms showing on the screen for further updates on our market reports. This period of the pandemic, ProShare has provided an up-to-date information on the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on the markets and economy. All you need to do is to log on to www.prosherng. All you need to do is to log on to www.prosherng.com slash COVID-19 to get incisive analysis from our Corona Central watch. Till we come your way again, thank you for watching. Have a nice day and stay safe.